What's going on everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today, I get to talk about five graphic novel hidden gems. These are five books that don't get a lot of attention, a lot of love or recognition. So, let's get started. And welcome back everybody. So this is one of my favorite segments that I just, I remember, uh, I think it was during the pandemic, I just looked at a bookshelf and I had no idea what video I was gonna do that day, so I picked up five books and I said, hey, these are five books not a lot of people talk about, and that's how all of this started. And now you all recommend things and you all you know, comment on whether you've read these books or not. But yes, this is where I talk about five collected editions, graphic novels, um, that don't get a spotlight out there. Some of them go under the radar. Some of them just, uh, you know, there are there might be people out there that have reviewed them or talk about them, but just I don't see a lot of love for these books. So hopefully you know, on this particular episode, you can find a book here that you'll love, you'll enjoy. It's become one of your favorite books, life changing, whatever it is. And then, of course, by all means, leave your comments down below. Let me know what five books you love that nobody talks about, or just one book. Um, I may or may not have read it. That's one of my favorite things about doing this particular segment is the comments are filled with so many ideas, and lots of those comments that you all have left down, those books ended up on this particular list. So smash that like button, please, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications. That helps with our YouTube algorithm, and right now the YouTube algorithm is messed up, so it means the world to us here. And thank you to our patrons for making videos like this possible. Let's go ahead and get started. Debris by Riley Rosmo and Curtis Weeb. This is published by Image Comics. It's part of their Shadow line. And what I was gonna say is that this is an all and done. You don't need to have read anything before this book or after this book to enjoy it. Everything you need to know is in this particular collected edition. So this is one for teens. Um, it is set in this post-apocalyptic world. And while the story doesn't really venture into any new or evolutionary territory, because you know we have this doomed planet where Earth is just rotting and decaying, so post-apocalyptic world, but it really leans on those cliches and overused tropes. And that's why I love it, because it does that so perfectly. Um, in this future, we meet this character known as Callista. She's this older, badass protector of this town known as Maiden. And Maiden is where all the remaining human beings of this post-apocalyptic world live. And her job is to protect the town. She has a big sniper rifle that she hunts animals around the town. So nobody's allowed to go outside of the town, really. Now, she knows one day her day will come and she has to pass on her knowledge and her badass skills to her protege. So she's taking on this girl named Maya as her disciple, if you will. And sure enough, a day comes where this big creature... So in this world, there are these mechanical giant gods known as the Colossals. And we don't know exactly what they are, but we do know they have mechanical parts. And one of these Colossals makes it into town, destroys the uh, the main water line that goes into town, and then kills off Callista, leaving Maya to be the sole protector of Maiden. And Maya's first order of business is to make sure that the town has a water supply. So with the water supply destroyed, she is off and trying to find this legendary place called Athabasca, where trees and grass grow and water is abundant. Now, leaving town is not something that anybody does, so there's all kinds of adventures in here. Is she alone out there? Uh, will she meet anybody else that has left town? Well, one way to find out. I really enjoy this. The artwork is what really, really uh, drew me into this book. Um, Rosemont's art reminds me a lot of Fiona Staples. It's got a cartoony feel to it, um, an anime look to it, but it's easy to follow. The, the story is an absolute must read. And again, available in trade paperback, and it's the only way that this has ever been collected. And do yourself a favor and check it out. That's how we're kicking off the list. Junk Wraith by Eleanor Ritchie, and this is published by Top Shelf. This is another all and done and it's also a book for teens. Now, what attracted me to this book was that cover. 
has a unique look to it and honestly that is the big reason why I ended up loving this particular title. It reminded me of Taiyu Matsumoto's artwork in Tekon Kinkrete or number six I believe is what the manga he is working on right now. It's weird and pretty at the same time. No, let's not use those words. Let's say bizarre and imaginative and just plain gorgeous. It's a nice amalgam of all three of those words. I loved it. Um, so the story is about this character named Florence Sato, or as her friends call her, Flo. And she is an ice skater. But because of her pressures of her parents and just her friends, she decides she wants to give up ice skating. She decides that's not who she wants to be. She throws away her ice skates. And this accidentally summons this ghost-like creature known as a junk wraith. And what the junk wraith do is they get revenge for the abandoning, like abandonment of things. And what they do is they start attacking the memories of the previous owner of these things. So she's starting to lose her memories. So she goes on a journey with her juju named Frank. And a juju, everybody has a juju in this particular world. A juju works like an iPhone. It's connected to a world wide web. It just knows everything. But it's this cute little thing that rides on your shoulder. And like I said, everybody has one. Well, except the pirates. But anyway, that's going into the story too much. So she goes on this journey to try to get her memories back, to try to find the ice skates, to try to get the junk rate that took her ice skates. So one of the things she has to do is go into the wastelands, go into the cave of restoration, and to just put this monster at rest. Meanwhile, she it's adorable because she writes her parents a note like, I'm leaving and this is why. So it's a quick read, very stylish, beautiful art, creative story with a lot of heart and one that I don't know why people didn't talk about as much. I know it came out last year and maybe it's too soon and not a lot of hype has been built around this book. Almost made it in my top 10, but there were so many good books. There's so many good books every year. That's the beauty of this hobby, but yes, Absolutely junk wraith. The Highest House from Mike Carey and Peter Gross, published by IDW. Now this one is in a magazine size format. Uh, this is the only way that it's ever been collected. And another book that, yeah, not a lot of people talk about. So when you hear the names Mike Carey, Peter Gross, I know immediately I thought of books like Lucifer. But this is a lot different than Lucifer. This is a lot denser. There's a lot of dialogue in this. Partially, that's the reason why I enjoyed it so much. It's a, There's a lot of world building that's done properly in this. So this is a fictional world of Ozaniel. And we meet the noble family of Aldecrest. And they rule this, this land and they hide in, well, I don't want to say hide, but they live in this highest house in which the highest house is like a big fortress. And this fortress houses a lot of servants. And by servants, I mean slaves. And one of these particular slaves that is new to the Highest House is Moth. Now, Moth is sold to the Highest House at the very beginning of the story um, because his mother needed money, and it's kind of a really sad story. Moth makes friends with the princess of the Highest House. He makes enemies of some of the people. But this is where he turns into something supernatural. He starts hearing voices and Eventually, he comes across this being, this supernatural being known as the Obsidian. And Obsidian is just trapped inside the rocks of the highest house. However, Obsidian promises him his heart's desire in exchange for his help. So, you can see where it goes and what his heart's desire is. It's, I think, a pretty unique take on something like Aladdin. Um, where there's no songs or anything in here, but it does have some uh, dark themes in here. So I would say something like older teens would be okay to read this particular book. The only negative thing I would say about this book is that sadly it ends with book one, the end, or the end of book one rather. So we know there's enough material there because the world building isn't done. I mean, we just got to meet this particular part of this world. So we know there's enough material there for a book too. So hopefully, I hate when it says to be continued because I always think of like Back to the Future and there was no plan for Back to the Future 2. Anyway, where the hell was I? Yes, um, <laughs> maybe one day uh, Mike Carey and Peter Gross could come back together and finish or write more stories set in this particular world. But as of right now, it's only one book. And definitely, if you enjoy heavy literature, things like uh, The Last God, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Hench Girl by Kristen Goodsnook, and it is published by Dark Horse Comics. 
Now, Kristen is the artist and writer of this particular book. And this has been available in a couple of trade paperback printings. It's got an expanded trade paperback printing. And I don't know the history of this book. Maybe it started as a webcomic. I know Wonder Maddie could probably tell me. As a matter of fact, Wonder Maddie is the reason why I got this book. Um, she sent me... I think she ordered it for me. We we're going to do an old reader, new reader, and then life happened and we didn't do it. And maybe I need to go back to that show and do a couple of episodes with her and then do Hench Girl. Um, so this is the story about this girl named Mari Posa. Okay, her name is really Mary Posa, but that's Spanish for butterfly. And believe me, there's a butterfly theme here. Um, she's an office worker in Crep City. Uh, her boss is a supervillain that also has a butterfly theme. Her parents, along with her sister, are all superheroes in Crep City. Mary herself has, well, never mind, I'll keep quiet. You can find out for yourself if she does or does not have superpowers. Um, she also happens to be a hench girl, which is, of course, a uh, take on the name henchman, uh, in the Butterfly Gang. And to me, it was just definitely fun to see how Mary balances her gang life and criminal life, her normal day life with her two roommates. One of them has the carrot power, which is ridiculously funny, I think. Um, she's trying to, uh, she has a, a, a guy that she likes and she's trying to find a job. Because often books about criminals focus on that criminal lifestyle and, and takes themselves too seriously. Whereas this one just has a lot of fun with the idea that she happens to be a criminal, she happens to have a crappy job, but she has this everyday mundane life. And I really enjoy that about this. Like, t to me, it felt like um, there were a lot of pop culture references in here that made this book pretty, f like, pretty funny. And what surprises me is that the dark turns that the book went. So to play it safe, I'm gonna say older teen for this book because it looks like it's almost pre-teen at the beginning, but then when it takes a turn here and there, there are some dark elements there. Like I said, it takes me by surprise, not just in her art, but the actual tone of the story. So it's quirky, it's funny, clever, self-aware, and full of pop culture references. So if you like books like um, Scott Pilgrim, this might be for you. Basilisk by Cullen Bunn and Jason Scharf, published by Boom Studios. And I want to give a huge thank you to Darkstar916 for sending me a copy of this, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, this is the same creative team that did Bone Parish, which you may have seen in one of my Hidden Gem videos, either last year or this year. I can't remember when that was. Um, yeah. Sometimes I've, somebody pointed out that I've already done uh, uh, a book in two different Hidden Gem segments, and it's what happens when you've been doing this for a couple of years. I interviewed Cohen Bunn last year, and I told him I have no idea how he's able to write so many books. I think he writes more than I read. And not only is he a fast writer, but he also happens to be a good writer. And Basilisk is no exception. So Basilisk is this particular story about five young people with extraordinary powers. So picture this, five young people walk out of the Appalachians one day and everything in their path is being destroyed, everything is dying. And these five people, each one of them has bizarre control over one of the five human senses. So somebody has control over the ears, the eyes, basilisk, now you get it, that's Reagan. Um, and these senses turn against you. So during one of these dis destructions of this town, we meet this lady named Hannah, and Hannah's family is killed by the Chimera. That's what these five people are known as. So she has sworn an oath to hunt and kill each one of them down. Now, Reagan, like I said, the basilisk, the lady we see in the front, she is... She has decided she doesn't want to play along anymore. She doesn't want to be part of this chimera. She doesn't believe in making this cult that worship them. And uh, she wants out of this life, so she runs away. So, of course, Hannah is going after her because she's one of the five. And she has the cult members after her. And, of course, the, the rest of the chimera come after her. So do Hannah and Reagan team up to take down the Camaro? What happens after they take them down? Well, all those stories can be found in here. I haven't read volume three yet, so I'm not sure exactly when it is going to end. 
It is a fast-paced story with lots of action and lots of gore, and I mean lots of gore. So it is definitely for mature content. And when I say lots of gore, I don't, you know, if that's not for you, I completely re respect that. But it's not just about that. What I really enjoyed about this book is the mood, the atmosphere, and the deep mystery that is in here. Because there is a mystery. How do they get their powers? As a matter of fact, like at the very beginning when it starts off, there's no dialogue, so you're not really sure exactly what's going on. It's not until the end of the first issue that you're like, oh, five senses, okay. But where did these powers come from? They're still very vague about that, so I'm, I, I'm interested to see where the story goes from here. But definitely recommending this one. And most of these books, I think all of them are still in print. So check out our sponsors if you're interested in buying any of these. If you live in Europe and are interested in buying and pre-ordering Omnis, then you should definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices for Marvel and DC books within the EU, flat shipping rates of 11 euro and 90 cents for all EU countries, great customer service with sturdy packaging and emails answered within 24 hours. They also offer a superb selection of new titles and out of print books. Just head over to waltzcomicshop.com for more great deals and rare titles. For a limited time, you can use the code near mint condition, all one word, at checkout and get a 10 euros voucher for your first order over 40 euros. Waltz Comic Shop, you're reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ting. Cheapgraphicnovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. So that was my hidden gems for the month of July of 2022. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these, what you thought about them, if you suggest any five books that you've read recently or have read 30 years ago that you loved. Um, I would love to check them out sometime. That's how I find out about a lot of books. Please don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. That really is helping with our YouTube algorithm. And everyone on our Patreon, thank you all so much for making videos like this possible for the camera, for the lighting, for everything. I uh, could not be making videos like this without you all. So if you can't afford the Patreon, check out our Patreon. It's in the link of the, uh, the link is in the description of the video. Everyone stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.